What's, what's some of his commandments? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Read out. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So he says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. The nation of Israel, we are God's temple. Right? That's right. We are the gods on the earth. He put his spirit in us so that we can be the, the beacons of light, so to say, in this world. We are the temple. You are the temple. You are the temple. We are the temple of God. But is, the, is, the, is God going to dwell in a temple that's filthy and nasty? No, he's not. Bring it out. We're supposed to be the temple, but right now, today, living on these streets, the Most High God ain't dealing with us. Right. Because we evil. We do evil things. But well, let's finish this. Read. And that the Spirit of God dwell up in you. Uh-huh. The Spirit of God is supposed to be dwelling in you, cause you cause, because you are the Israelites. He created you for that purpose. Right. Read. If any man defile the temple of God. So now he said, if any man defile the temple of God, how do we defile the temple of God? But, but, but specifically, how do we, I'm going to say it like this, how do we defile our body? What are some ways that we defile our body? Smoking. Getting drunk. Getting high. Teeth. Eating shrimp. Eating crab, committing fornication, sleeping with woman after woman after woman after woman. All of those are ways that we defile our temple. We defile right. our body. Teach. We're not supposed to live like that. Exactly. We're not supposed to live like that. A woman is not supposed to lay down with a man until she gets married. That's what right. she's supposed to lay down with her husband. Bring it out. Not some random Joe Blow she met in the club. Bring it out. Same thing with men. Men are not supposed to be sleeping around with woman after woman after woman after woman. We're supposed to find us a wife, cleave to our wife, and that's who we sleep with. What? One woman what? for the rest of our life. That's how we're supposed to live. But today in the streets of Chicago, in the streets of Detroit, in the streets of L.A., everywhere we at, we ain't doing that. We want to sleep on every woman we see pass by. Those are, we're not supposed to be living like that. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So when we do those things, we, we drink, we smoke. We sleeping around with women. It says what? Him shall God destroy. God will destroy us. That's how we get the diseases. That's how you get lung cancer. We are destroyed when we defile our temple. You smoking cigarettes, you're going to eventually get lung cancer. You yeah. smoking weed, you're going to lose You're going to lose your memory, you're going to lose brain cells, and you're messing up your lungs. Right. You, that's you being destroyed because when you get cancer, you're going to die. The Most High God destroy us when we do not keep his commandments. Read it out. For the temple of God is holy. He said the temple of God is holy. We're supposed to take care of our body. We're supposed to take care of the things that we put in our body because we are the gods of the earth. That's right. We don't want to put That's why... You go go many places that's supposed to have that's supposed to plant good crops and the dang the dang on dirt don't don't produce nothing because this land been stripped of all this everything because we are not the heads right now we the tail we at the bottom of society and God's laws are not being enforced and in place in this land that's why we are shooting each other that's why we killing each other robbing all of those things are going on because we have disconnected from our God right. Right but it's something that God wants us to do so that we can see some change in the conditions that we live in. Us being shot down in the streets. Things of that nature. Read. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee. So it says, if they sin against thee. Are you familiar with the Bible? Yeah, you know who the Bible was written to? Huh? No, it was written by God, but who was it written to? It was written to his people, the Israelites. That's right. So the Bible was written to the Israelites, his people. Let's finish that. Read up. If they sin against thee. So it says, if they sin against thee. So if your people, the Israelites, which are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? Peruvian? Peruvian. Peruvian. Argentina. Okay. So look at this sign. Peruvians is Argentina. Argentina. What do you see yourself on this sign? Look at the look at the names on the on the right side. Okay, you found yourself. What's the what's the name on the on the left? It says Natali. So Argentina to Chile is Natali, Natali, right? Okay, so you're from the tribe of Natali, meaning you're of the nation of Israel. You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Read. So now it's saying if read it, read it. 
If they sin against thee. So if the Israelites sin against thee, meaning break your rules, God, read. For there is no man that sinneth not. The whole nation of Israel have broke God's law. That's why we're living in the conditions that we're living in. Right. That's why we're in our enemy's land. That's why we, we, we ducking and dodging bullets every night. That's why, the, that's why our, our sons and daughters are constantly be getting shot. Read. For there is no man that sinneth not. There is no man that sinneth not. Read. And thou be angry with them. And the Most High was angry with us, and he is angry with us. Read. And deliver them to the enemy. And he delivered us to the enemy. That's why we're living in this land and we don't own nothing. We, we outnumber everybody in this country, but we can't come together and take over our own community. Right. We don't police our own community. We don't own the stores in our community. Read. So that they carry them away captives or to the land of the enemy, far so, or near. And we were carried away captive in this land. We was taken to Europe, Spain. We everywhere. We were taken captive. We are the Israelites. We were taken captive. Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. But now it says yet. So it says, but, even though all that happened, if you bethink yourself. Do you know what it means to bethink? What it means to bethink? So when you bethink yourself, give me that in Baruch. You got it? Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stick necked people. But in the land of their captives, they shall remember themselves. So remember, it said then, when we just read in, let's read that in 1 Kings again. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. So it says, yet if they shall bethink themselves. In the land whither they were carried captives. In the land where they were carried captives. Now read that in Baruch 2 and 30. Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. Read it out. For I knew that they would not hear me. He said, for I knew they would not hear me. Meaning the Israelites. I knew the Israelites weren't going to listen to me. Read because it is a stiff-necked people. We are stubborn people. We don't like to listen to nothing. We don't like to listen to no instruction. That's why young men are bullheaded and killing each other. Read. But in the land of their captivity. In the land of their captivity. Same thing we just read. Read. They shall remember themselves. They shall remember themselves. That remember that think means to remember who you are. Today, that's what we bring into you, so you can remember who you are. That's what we're telling you, Stuart, that you can remember who you are. You can remember that you are the God of the earth. You are God's chosen people. You are the Israelites. You are the prince that has power with God. That's right. No matter what, how we living, we are the princes of the power. Right. Read, read that in 1 Kings. Let's continue. 1 Kings 8, verse 47. Yet yeah, if they shall bethink themselves uh -huh. in the land whither they were carried captives. So we remember who we are in our land, in the land that we were carried captives. Read. And repent. And repent. What does it mean to repent? Turn. Turn away. Turn away. What else it mean? To repent. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. But what, what, what else? What is, a, what is another key component of repentance? When you repent. You feel remorse for the things that you feel remorseful for the wrong that you've done. Because that's what's going to cause you to change and turn around. Right. When you repent, you feel remorse. You have a contrite heart. You feel bad because you found out that you've been living a lie. You've been living wrong. You've been living in error. You've been living in sin. You've been breaking God's rules. Read. If they shall bethink themselves in the land where they were carried captives, and repent. And repent. Feel remorse for what you did wrong. Read. And make supplication. And make supplication. Unto thee in the land of them that carry them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. It says, We have sinned and done per perversely. So you repent, you feel remorse for the things that you've done wrong. So read it again. Yet if they shall bethink themselves. In the land whither they were carried captives, uh -huh. and repent. And repent, read. And make supplication unto thee in the land. So we go, when we repent, we go, we make supplication unto the Most High God. We send up the prayers to the Most High God, read. Whether they were carried captives, them saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. So we admit that we've, uh, hey, we've been, I've been in the midst of all type of fornication. I've been in the midst of all type of adultery. I've been cheating on my wife. I've been smoking, drinking, robbing, stealing. We confess those things. We acknowledge that we've been in wrong. We've been in error. We've been living our life in error against our God. Read. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul. So now he says, and, we, and now when we do that, now, we, and we return unto him with all our heart, 
all our soul, read. In the land of their enemies. And we're going to do this in the land that we in. We're in the land of our enemies. We're returning unto our God. Right. We're returning to keeping his law. The men, we growing up, we letting our beards grow. We're not shaving our beards clean shaving no more. Read. Which led them captive and pray unto thee toward their land, uh -huh. which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, uh -huh. and the house which I have built for thy name. Uh -huh. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication. So when we do these things, when we repent, change our ways and return back to God's laws, then he going to hear us. He going to hear our prayers. You defiling your temple, my brother. You defiling your temple. You killing yourself from the inside out. You lost your mother? You said last year? 2020. Okay. Sorry to hear that. When we read the Bible, we see that how our forefathers handled things, how they handled stress, how they overcame things. Read. Things written the full time were written for our learning uh -huh. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. So it's the scriptures that's going to give us comfort. Right. The scriptures give us comfort. Like we just read first when we read First Corinthians thirty three and sixteen, it says he that defiled the temple of God, God gonna destroy it. That's that's oh, that's a comforting word. Seem harsh, but that's actually comforting because that's gonna allow you to put that cigarette down. Because that cigarette is destroying your lungs. Right. You destroying yourself by smoking that cigarette. And if you destroy yourself, the Most High gonna destroy you. The Most High gonna cause you to have cancer. You don't want that. Things written the full time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the purpose of the, the scriptures is going to give us that comfort. It's going to give us that hope. The scriptures are what's going to satisfy what we need. That cigarette ain't satisfying nothing. That cigarette is putting you in the early grave. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 12. Seek not death in the era of your life. So it says seek not death in the area of your life. The cigarette, the, the box of cigarettes say that it caused cancer. Right. So when you smoke cigarettes, and yeah, I know, I know it's, it's a, it could be addictive, but you can wean yourself off of it. Some people are able to stop cold turkey. If you're able to stop cold turkey, stop cold turkey is better for you. But you got to stop because when you smoke cigarettes, you're seeking death. And the error, read it again. Seek not death in the error of your life. Making bad decisions. You, you, you're smoking a cigarette that can kill you to comfort yourself from a death. That's not good. That's seeking death in the error of your life. You're making the wrong decisions, right? right? And pour not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. It said don't pull on yourself destruction with the work of your hands. Don't destroy yourself by the things that you do. The sooner you quit, the better. Leave them cigarettes alone. If you got a pack, throw it away. Work on it, you got to throw it away. If you, if you smoke a pack a day, challenge yourself to smoke one cigarette a day. And wean yourself off of them cigarettes. Teach. Because my name is Simakaya. Yeah. Those cigarettes ain't doing you no good. It's all it's all in your mind. Read um give me and this is a scripture. Give me Philippians chapter four and verse thirteen. This is a scripture that a lot of us probably heard a whole lot. Because most of us came up in the Christian church. But read that. Philippians chapter listen, four listen verse thirteen. I can do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. So the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. In no way is this a Christianity saying. Because a Christi in Christianity, they say, I can do all things. They say it all day. I can do all things that through Christ which strengthens me. Then you say, hey, the Bible says you got to grow your beard. No, I can't do that. But it's God's commandment. No, I can't do that. Today the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Don't go shopping. Don't go buying and selling on the Sabbath. No, I can't do that. But the scriptures say Christ. We read it again. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You can stop smoking them cigarettes. Right. Change that I'm trying or I'm working it to just do it. Right. Just be like, make, up, make it up in your mind. You know what? These cigarettes are killing me. You know what? I'm getting rid of this. I'm going to kick this habit. And when you get that, that craving to smoke a cigarette, pick up your Bible and read. Right. Read the history because that's going to give you that comfort. Whatever things that's stressing you out, the things that you're battling with, you get you a concordance, find those things in the Bible, and those are the things that you meditate on. used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. 
Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.